Welcome back. Imagine being born into one of the world's most notorious religious sects. Growing up with no say in anything you do, anything you wear or anyone you meet, Bexie Cameron was raised in the infamous Children of God cult and escaped to tell the tale. Tell me everything. People say this when they find out I was born in a sex cult. It's why I sit here now, 15 years after I escaped from the Children of God. It's what made me leave my home in London, my brothers and sisters, my job to rejoin the world of religious cult. To tell you everything. Do you want to hear about my exorcism? About my year of silence? Or about the prophet who became a predator? And I still can't wrap my head around how all of that brought me here, 5,000 miles from home, on this journey of meltdowns, breakdowns, meth cooks, monks, and soap-making Armageddoners after battling demons and myself, all in the hopes that I can tell you everything. It's intense, isn't what a story. Bexie joins us now this morning. Bexy, good morning to you. Thank you for being on the show. Good morning. Thanks for having me. You were born into the Children of God cult. So growing up, what are your memories and, and how strict was it? Ooh, I mean, my memories are so mixed of that time. And sometimes even looking back on it, it feels like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about a film that I watched rather than about my own childhood because it's so wildly different from the world that I inhabit now. But it's everything from um, things like being raised to believe that we were going to have superpowers, that we were going to have lasers coming out of our eyes, you know, things that just sound ridiculous when you're in regular society, to, um, to things like just not having an education, to not listening to music, to not... Um, having TV, you know, smaller things like that. So, yeah, it, it, it was really strict. It was a separatist group. So they wanted to keep us away from what you would call regular society because we had a purpose, we had a mission, and that was that the end of the world was coming and we were supposed to be the martyrs that died in it. Wow. So when was it then, if you were born into this, when was it that you know, gave you that first hint that perhaps there was a, a whole other world out there? Um, there was a point where we had a journalist that uh, came into our into our one of our communes um, when we stopped going on the run because we had to at a certain point, and he asked me a question. And I think I was about eleven years old. Where he said, "What is it that you want to be when you grow up?" And um, this was the first time I'd ever been asked this question, and it was the first time that I was ever it, ever it ever dawned on me that perhaps what they were saying to me wasn't true, and perhaps there was a world outside of these gates, and maybe I did have the opportunity to grow up. So Walter, um, who was this journalist, uh, was the man that asked me that question, and really he was the one that gave me this kind of crack through the wall or through the, the gates of where I was to make me believe that there could be another life for me. Um, and yeah, when he said to me, what do you want to be? Um, I, I think just because I was completely enamored with him. He was such a lovely man and he was probably one of the first people to talk to me in this kind of way of like, empathy. I just copied what he was doing. I said, um, you know, I, I want to be like you. I want to be a journalist without really actually probably thinking about what that meant. Mm. Yeah, I, and it's extraordinary to then have to escape that and I guess sort mm. of deprogram in a way. So how did you do it and, what, and how, how, how old were you? So, yeah, the, the, the idea of escape is an interesting one because sometimes, you know, the, the, doors that, the doors that aren't locked are the ones that are the most difficult to get to, you know, through. We didn't really have, like, you know, barbed wire and dogs outside of our, outside of our homes. We were raised in such a way in a, in a community that that was our absolute world. So to leave it is a really big deal. But um, when I was 15 years old, I met a boy who was um, in the, a neighbouring village and we plotted between us for, for my escape. And unfortunately for me, I got found out during that process. So I ended up being voted out of the um, voted out of the, the home that I was in, and it was unanimous, including my parents. Um, and I think the unfortunate side of that was the empowerment of making my own choice to leave was kind of taken from me, and I was ousted, or if you want to put it in biblical terms, shunned um, from the group. Wow. And, and from your family. Uh, but you chose to go back into some religious cults years after your escape to look for answers. Uh, what did you find? I know, it's a pretty bonkers idea, isn't it? <laughs> um, so, I, yeah, I, I, I bought a truck, went, went to the States, 
bought a truck and I did a journey which kind of took a, a span over four years, 13 different states. I joined 10 groups all together. And what I found, I mean, it was the journey of a lifetime, really. Found everything from people who believed that the Armageddon was coming, much like my own group did, to um, people who believed they could channel aliens, to, you know, just so many different faiths and religions and ways of being. Um, but I think what I did find as, as well amongst that was there were commonalities between the adults that had joined these feelings of enlightenment and feeling that they'd found their purpose and they'd found their goal. And then there was also the commonalities between the children who were being born into these groups. And I think for me, that was one of the big drivers of doing this trip and having this journey was, you know, I was a child who was born into a group. I never made the choice to be in it. I was what you might call an innocent passenger within this, um, within the world that I was in. And, um, and when you are that, you don't have the choice. And that's why I think it's really important to do journeys like these, to interrogate groups like this, because when, when an adult's, human, when an adult's uh, right to believe whatever they want, and we all have the right to believe what we want, we have the right to believe in aliens if we want to, but if that comes into conflict with a child's human rights, that's when we really need to start questioning it. Yeah, absolutely. Great point there. Thank mm. you so much, Bexie. We really appreciate your time. Thanks, Bexie. Thank you, Bexie. You can pick up a copy of Bexie's uh, memoir, My Escape and the Return to the Children of God. Fascinating stuff. It's out now.